news dump. Such huge news this past week, Mac. We got our first trailer for The Acolytes. And while YouTube might have an overwhelmingly negative uh, feeling towards this trailer, 55 dislikes, 55% dislikes, I thought it was cool. Each, the Star Wars community are their own worst enemies. And listen, we're a part of it. I, yeah. I, I but I also feel like there's a the the Ryan Johnson haters, myself included. I'll consider you one as well. But you're no, I'm, I'm more it. towards the fence. Don't consider me a hater. The Last Jedi was terrible. I don't like the Last it. Jedi, but I'm yeah, not a hater. That's, that's more what I'm talking about. I like Knives Out and, and Ryan Johnson's actions after that movie. I, I like Looper. Uh, Looper was great. I love. Um, it. Separate from the Ryan Johnson stuff, there's a whole war constantly being battled for the last and 30 the years. Yeah. 25 years, anyways. Yeah, 25, 30 years between Star Wars fans. And it started with the prequels because yeah. you have a lot of these Star Wars nerds that sort of fall under this felony George Lucas can do no wrong. And they'll explain to you why the prequels were good. So this war started long before youtube and whatnot you know on internet message boards and it's spilled over obviously into the the new trilogy which admittedly wasn't good but it, this battle is never going to end because you just have those people that will never admit when star wars does something bad and in turn you ha now have the sex of star wars fans that only like certain things personally i like the space wizards with the lightsabers you know there's That's a lot of people that love madness. yep yeah, a lot of people that love that show, Andrew, not for me. But now you have these different sects all fighting against each other because of all these lines being drawn in the sand. And it, it's really it's really unfortunate because ultimately we can all choose to enjoy stuff if we really want. But because it's the most popular thing in the world and because it's been around for 50 years, it, it's just it's so toxic. It's so fucking toxic. By the way, George Lucas stabbed a bunch of those people in the back this week by saying that Bob Iger knows how to make magic. A lot of people don't, so get off his back. <laughs> uh, but the Acolyte, yeah. uh, it is my exact style. We <laughs> have, I don't know, 30 space wizards in here. This is the type of Star Wars story I've been longing for for a while. There's so many Jedi across this universe before we get into the Skywalker saga that have untold stories. And there's a lot of stories you can tell that they just have not done. And this seems to be one of those stories. And I'm super excited for it. I'm super excited to play in this sandbox that has no real meaning in connection to the Skywalker saga. I believe this is set a hundred years before. May I read to you what culture club put up on X? Sure. This is set 100 years before the phantom menace. So Yoda, I believe is alive. Should be didn't use the volume VFX at all during filming. Okay, Narratively go either similar way to Andor. Okay. Eight episodes. Each episode around 30 minutes. Pitchered, pitched, I'm sorry, pitched as a multi-season show. Picard as a multi-season <laughs> show. And incorporates EU slash Legends lore. Yeah, so I'm sure we're going to see characters in here that have popped up in books and video games and whatnot. Um, and I, 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 I haven't, I will never dive that far into Star Wars fandom, but um, the hundred years thing is nice too because it does allow them a lot of run up and do whatever they want if they want to go multi season. I'm just real. What I'm really hoping for here is a couple cool Jedi we can root for and a pretty good villain. That's good enough for me if we're dealing with lightsabers and force users. That's all I need. And the Andor thing, like, I I don't really, of course, is you're dealing with rebels and whatnot. I've always said, listen, the minute they introduce lightsabers to Andor, I'm in. Until then, oh, you know who I'm I like. Watch. I like that guy at the beginning, that little fuzzy guy who blinks real slow. Yep. And also at the beginning, they show the uh, so the one of the villains seems to be sort of this ethnic looking woman. I, I can't tell. You know, it's fucking Star Wars. Who knows what what she actually is? She's dark skinned. And they show a, a young, dark-skinned girl in this room of the young Jedis. So I'm imagining that she starts out as a Jedi. Something happens, and she turns into this to this bad person. The Jedi are being hunted. I also feel like we're going to end up rooting for that character whose face we mm -hmm. see, the, the quote-unquote bad person, by the end of this season. 
Also, I haven't watched the video yet, but new rock star said that my little friend there, my little furry friend who blinks slow, is going to have a horrible death in this show. And I said, I don't like the sound of that. And they responded by saying, he knows it's coming and it's going to be glorious. Um, It'd be really funny if he was slow like a sloth. Yeah. So like he would go to use a lightsaber, but it would just take way too long. <laughs> but, a, but a great force wielder. Yeah, he's dumb. <laughs> Another trailer for the Fall Guy and Mac. Are we being set up for disappointment? I think you might be. I think you might be. You are head over heels for this, this movie. This looks so good. <laughs> this looks like the best movie of the year now. I think the movie looks great. I think yeah. the movie looks great. I I don't think it's going to be the best movie of the year, but you seem to think it might be. It looks funny. It looks action packed and it looks sexy. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. That's all we want. The Goss is great. Emily Blunt is great. I, mm -hmm. I don't know anything about the television series that it's based off of, you either, which is to. good. Yeah, you don't need to. I don't I don't need any. Of that. I would imagine. And I have no knowledge of this. It's like watching 21 Jump Street where you'll get like a cameo. And if you know it, cool. And if you don't, it doesn't add or take away from anything. As long as it's not like get smart, we're going to be all right. I don't know where Johnny Depp shows up and they're like, wait a second. You weren't in the fall guy. Yeah, Just but I was in 21 Jump nose. Street. Yeah. <laughs> News dump. <laughs> Got a teaser trailer for Alien Romulus, and this seems less action packed and more spooky. Yeah, this seems like it's going to get back to the roots of that first movie where it's it you feel claustrophobic. Yeah, you feel like you're getting stalked. Um, it's like these I long drawn out shots where yeah. you're like, when yeah. is something going to happen? Yeah, you're going to feel on edge the whole time. Um, I'm not going to pretend I have high expectations for this movie, but it's promising. And the director Fetty Alvarez has made a couple really good horror movies already. So if we're leaning back into the horror of Alien and away from the action from Aliens, I'm all in. News down. Another trailer for Furiosa. I don't know what this movie could possibly do for me to see it. Um, there's a obviously a lot of people loved Fury Road. This is a prequel for the character Furiosa. I just like, are you looking forward to this movie? Do you have, what, what? what's your expectations for this movie? If I'm going to put a dog scale on how excited I am to see it, 32. Okay. Well, that's reasonably high. Yeah, it's reasonably high, but it isn't the fall guy. What did you give Fury Road? 35. Okay. Yeah, you liked it way fucking more than I did. Yeah. I, I don't, I like I don't cool know. Stuff. I like cool stuff more than anything else. You're always looking, oh, I want a good story. No, I yes, cool. I do. I want a good I story. I want people wearing sunglasses and smoking cigarettes. That's all I want I a good story and or lightsabers. It's the only two requests I ever have. Is it good? No. Was there a lightsaber? <laughs> yes. So then it was good. <laughs> Got a trailer for Harold and the Purple Crayon. You put this in here. I saw one still, and I said I'm not going to watch this. I've never heard of the book or book series. Uh, first time I was hearing of this movie was when Keith brought it up during the movie draft. This looks like a nice little family movie. Um, I do think Zachary Levi is the perfect adult for these types of movies. That's why I think he works so well for Shazam. Like He has this boyish charm and giddiness mm -hmm. to him that I think works really well in these types of characters. News to that. Do we have a new James Bond? Because a British tabloid said that Aaron Taylor Johnson was offered the role, but then Variety said, no, he hasn't. And recently he said that we need to stop having these big studios making these big movies, said Craven the Hunter's Aaron Taylor Johnson. <laughs> uh, Aaron Taylor Johnson, I think, is the perfect bloke to be the next Bond. He is in his early to mid thirties. So you can make a decade plus worth of, of movies with him. He's a strapping young lad. He looks really good. He's a little beefy. Um, he's not the tallest guy ever. So you have a little bit of a Daniel Craig thing there, but I like Aaron Taylor Johnson and almost everything he's ever been in. I don't know how this fails. If it's him, I, I think he's that good of an actor. So I would be all in on this. Uh, he also in a little, I don't know if it's the same, interview or whatever the fuck he was talking about uh he's he's already coming out defending craven and said he has very high expectations for for how this is going to play out he said he would not have signed on if he didn't think this movie was going to be great first off i think it's going to stink number two you've already poo-pooed this because you think the gentleman is not handsome enough 
But I would take a one-off Killian Murphy Bond movie. Just one, though. Um, yeah, I don't think he's handsome enough. I really don't. But maybe if he beefs up, that face fills out a little bit. It's just the gauntness of his no. face. Let his face be like that. That's no. his face. No. He, but, he, Killian Murphy would actually be great as a, a, a Bond villain. I have one uh, rule that has to come in here, that if I get my Killian Murphy movie, mm -hmm. it needs to be a Christopher Nolan Bond movie. Uh, well, the other thing is Aaron Taylor Johnson was in Tenet, which, mm -hmm. so he's got that Christopher Nolan relationship there too. So, so maybe that's part of this as well. Christopher yeah. Nolan has said in the past that he would not do a Star Wars. He would not do a Marvel. He loves the Fast and the Furious, but he didn't say anything about doing one of those, but he would do a Bond. Yeah. I think as a British director too, I think, yeah. I think the Brits have more fondness for this as character. As sipping tea. And eating <laughs> <laughs> but I also feel like. Uh, in a Bond movie, you can tell whatever sort of yeah. interesting story you want to tell as opposed to Star Wars or a Marvel movie. Whoa, Bond, are you going into people's dreams? <laughs> Bondception. Yep, news dump. Speaking of Nolan, who was a director of a Batman trilogy, Jake Gyllenhaal said that he would be down to play Batman in the new DCU created by James Gunn saying it would be an honor. Those types of things and roles are classics. He was also on the short list to play the Dark Knight in the Nolan trilogy. I was just going to say, I remember him. I think he was in the final two or three there. Mm -hmm. um, he's in an interesting spot. Jill Nall is a very good actor. He can play the beefy, hunky role. I think mm -hmm. he'd be able to pull off both sides of Batman, Batman and Bruce Wayne. However, he's getting older. And if you're building a universe, I yeah. don't know if you want the age of Jalen There, the first Batman movie that has been announced as Bra as uh, Batman: Brave and the Bold, which would be mm -hmm. him and his son Damian Wayne. Okay, Wayne's not Wayne. Uh, wait, no, Bruce Wayne. Bruce Wayne. I keep on going back and forth with the Wayne's the brothers. Wayne's brothers, yeah. yeah. Because uh, Marlon Wayne's almost played uh, Robin. Robin. Did so play him. I just cut it my word salad in my head um you know what? that's but, a good uh, point so Damien if, is is roughly 10 years old so all right so if he's 10 years old you got to figure batman's got to be around 45 so jill hall would work be in his that. teens sorry he's like i think 10 to 12 i know he was raised by the league of assassins and so I'm, I'm guessing batman's 45 to 50 in that story so jill hall would work for that i if that's the case then this would be pretty good casting news down you know what has come out already and i think is Phenomenal. I have swell, loved all would you these say? episodes. What's up? Would you say swell? Yes. I would say swell. <laughs> I have loved the first two episodes of X-Men 97. Loved. I have not gotten a chance to watch them yet. What are you doing? Go watch yeah. them. I know. I'm a busy boy. What do you, what do you oh want my from God. me? Number one, it should be a crime if you skip the theme song. Agreed. And um, I think that they have done such a great job of encapsulating just the the feel and uh the camaraderie of the original show in this one the animation's not the same at points i think it's a little wonky but i have loved what they've done with these two episodes what they've done with the characters magneto is awesome in this um how they're advancing it how they're trying to bring it forward into this day and age and wow 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 i was i was not expecting it to be this good I have one question. Yes. Is it um, more episodic and one-off like the original series, or are they carrying a, a one storyline through these first two episodes? That's one story. Well, so it's going to be one central storyline that's going to run through all of these episodes. Okay. But the, second the original episode, series didn't really do that. The second episode already ended with a cliffhanger. Oh. And I was on the Stairmaster and almost fell off. I don't, so, oh man, are you able to watch a whole episode on a Stairmaster? Yeah, that's what I usually do, because they're Good like 25 you. minutes, so I just pop on the Stairmaster. I do five oh. minutes on the Stairmaster, and I am ready to die. I love the Stairmaster. That's my only cardio. Credit to you. I do Stairmaster Stair every easy. day, not every easy. day, mm. and that's why you. I look this good at the age of 57. <laughs> News dump. <laughs> Got a trailer for Marvel 1943 Rise of Hydra. This is a Vidya game. This looks fucking sweet. I had no idea this was being made. Are we buy the beta? 
Yeah, right. <laughs> it is set in the year 1943, so yep. Nazi Germany, Hydra, that whole setting. Captain America, obviously around. They bring Black Panther into this whole mix. Obviously, you get dealing with vibranium and shit there. Mm-hmm. Looks like the game's going to open with them versus each other, and then you'll probably have and it's them. it's Charles' father, right? Or is it his grandfather? It's got to be grandfather, maybe great great grandfather. Great-great-grandfather. Mm-hmm. Um, and it looks like they're probably going to end up fighting Hydra together. It's a cool premise. Um, the graphics looked phenomenal just in that little cut scene we saw. Uh, so it'll be, this comes out 2025. Uh, I'm looking forward to this. I'll, I obviously, I, I'm not going to confirm I'll get it because obviously that might be the worst $70 I ever Can spent. Can we explain what Avengers we're talking game. about? Let's the Avengers game that came about. out for PlayStation four or five was, was five even out Four. it was, four. It was PlayStation four came out right before covid i think or right around it was COVID. during covid i think okay. that was one of the reasons why because i'm like oh something to do yeah uh paid 70 bucks got the beta i played the game for four hours total never played it again i played and, 45 minutes and also that game didn't do well that was part of the reason why we never picked it up again it was super repetitive too but hopefully the story for this keeps you going because that's really the whole thing as fun as gameplay could be if there's not a story roping you back in, you, once you put the game down, you might never pick it back up. News down. Starting soon, and I forgot to put the dates in here, but Spider-Man, all eight Spider-Man movies, starting with the Sam Raimi one from the year 2001. They're all heading back to theaters, and I believe it's Tuesdays or something. Give it a Google. I only have half of the information, or I forgot to get the rest of it, but... Are you enticed to see any of the Spider-Men again in theaters? Nope. I'll be skipping these. You get three Raimi, two two, uh, Mark Webb, Andrew Garfield, and obviously three Tom Holland movies. Um, I don't know. I don't know why I would go see these in theaters again. I have no idea why. I might see the first one again. If if I had to uh, pick, I I would pick Spider-Man 2, actually. I will say it'd be one of the first two. I want to say that I've already seen in theaters two three amazing and then the newer ones i think i've seen all eight in theaters all eight in theaters oh do you have a little stash that says that all eight spider-man in theaters (laughs) news no reach the button there mac the office is being reloaded the series is officially moving forward at nbc this is something i don't want you don't want no one wants they've been discussing it for a couple of years, especially once Peacock came around, uh, the show is being developed by Greg Daniels, one of the original producers, showrunners, as well as Michael Komen, who is, uh, I don't know if he's a showrunner or producer on Nathan for you. So that's encouraging. Um, and the idea is going to be a new office with new characters, which if you're going to do it, you got to do it that way. Don't bring in the characters. Oh, you, know you, know the bo- you know who the boss should be? Who? Plop. I won't be surprised if there is one crossover character. Mm-hmm. Um, just keep it separate. Oh, the now, boom guy. Brian, the boom guy. <laughs> I I do I do allow for the chance that this could be a pretty funny show. I just, I want them to steer clear of the- It needs to be completely different. That's what yeah. made the American office so good is that they tried to be the British office in season one. And mm-hmm. once they kind of got away from that, that's when it was so good. The British office also very good, but you couldn't do that again with the American actors. Right. Right. Exactly. That's like, um, I was a huge fan of the IT crowd, which is a British television show, much like the office. It's uh Chris O'Dowd and um, what's his name? The guy with the, the dread type hair. No, he's a, it's an Afro. Um, Adewale? Is that his name? Oh, Adewale? Does he have dreads in that horrible babysitter movie? What's the he one? Might. He's in that he movie might. with Ben Stiller. Jo- uh, is it Jonah Hill? That's in that that's, movie too? That's The Watch. What's the movie? Neighborhood, the neighborhood Watch. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the one I'm talking about. Yeah. Vince Who the Vaughn? fuck's in that movie? Yeah, Vince Vaughn is in that movie. Is it David Adewale? That might be it. That movie okay. sticks, Either way. by the way. So the British version is hilarious. It's amazing. And then they tried to make it for the American television and they actually brought Adewale over here. I, I hope that I'm picking the right guy's name. Sure. And they actually used him as the exact same character. And they replaced O'Dowd with Joel McHale. And the pilot is a shot-for-shot shot remake. And it is terrible. I'm not a McHale guy. You know that. I think he's the worst character on Community outside of Chevy Chase. Uh, 
ah, Joe McHale. That's and the thing with Chris O'Dowd. No, I don't have to go too deep into the IT crowd comparisons here. Chris O'Dowd has a certain, you know, lovable effect about him. Joe McHale does not have that. What is this guy's name? Either way, news dump. <laughs> <laughs> the bear has been renewed for season four. Yeah, this is not a show I particularly cared for. Um, a lot of people love it, so that's good news. And they are filming Richard seasons. Richard Adewale. There you Richard. go. Dick. There we go. Uh, they're filming seasons three and four. Back Iode. Back. So, Iode. I'm not Adewale. It's, I am having a tough You got it time. wrong. Who cares? I got it wrong. It's Iode. Iode. Sure. No one, no one cared, I don't think. I think everyone cared. Everyone's like, goo, say it right. The Bear season three, three and four being filmed back to back. I think that's a good good news if you're a fan of the, of that show. Also, Matt Berry was on that show, who is now very well known for what we do in the shadows. And I can watch the clip of him saying, you're the biggest bastard of New York City, over and over again. Makes me laugh every single time. Have you seen that? No. Go oh, just go watch that one clip. The way that he pronounces every word is hilarious. <laughs> news dump. <laughs> Got some stills from Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice and I, now, I was never out on this movie, but I am all the way back in. Your attitude during the movie draft was as if you were almost out on the movie. I feared it because it's a legacy sequel. It is a comedy sequel coming out 40 years later. By the way, yeah. they still have not confirmed that this is the name of the movie. It's still operating under Beetlejuice 2. Beetlejuice. <laughs> um. I I don't like I don't know how the movie's not going to be good. I just don't know if it's going to be great. I think it's going to be a, a fun little romp operating in that fucking afterlife world. Look, and we'll talk about afterlife. We'll talk about Ghostbusters in a second. And that is what scares me about these movies because I just saw the new Ghostbusters movie. I think it stinks. Mm. And I just fear them bringing back these IPs from the 80s and not knowing what to do with them. Yep, it's a good point. Based up. Speaking of a great IP, Cat in the Hat, we have our new Cat in the Hat. I believe it's a voice, correct? And that yeah, is Bill animated. Hader. Yeah, Bill, Hader, Bill Hader will be the voice of the new Cat in the Hat. Finally. Finally. Long National Nightmare is over. Um, Although Mike Myers is hashtag my cat in the hat. <laughs> uh, Bill Hader's great. I'm sure this will be good enough. Like, think of everything that we've ever said bad about the Dr. Seuss live-action Grinch movie. And you might think that's a little overboard. I agree. I think it's a little crass looking. Um, the Cat in the Hat is everything negative we've ever said about that movie and more and true. Jim Carrey, The Grinch, was the first movie we ever took my little brother to. He was mm -hmm. like two or three years old. He, he made it through the whole the whole thing. Wow. Yeah. You get a lot of distractions there, though. There was three of us with him. So. Like The Grinch is Citizen Kane compared to The Cat in the Hat. That Cat in the Hat is terrible. Uh, the Jim Carrey Grinch might be underrated. It might be underrated. Is that because we've been saying how I just don't like the look of it for so many years? Yeah, but the Grinch should be crass, though, you know? Cat in the Hat, not so much. <laughs> That's my Mike Myers in the movie. <laughs> News dump. Speaking of a movie that everybody wants, all the kids have been clamoring for. The kids all say, we want more Popeye the Sailor Man. I love spinach because of Popeye. What are we doing? Why are we grabbing this character from a bygone era of like, oh, you know what the kids need? More Popeye the Sailor Man. We got to do Robin Williams justice and remake. And look, the I don't Sailor like Man. the Robin Williams uh, Popeye movie that came out in the 80s, but I saw who plays olive oil. Is it Shelley Duvall? I think so. Someone did a behind the scenes like, look, it, this movie kind of got panned, everything else. But look at the production design of this movie and the fact that they built this entire town for the movie. So, like, there's stuff like that that makes me appreciate a movie more because of how much effort went into the entire production of the movie. Sure. Much like, uh, I think the same YouTube channel actually did one for the Flintstones that came out in 94, where they're like, they built all of this stuff. <laughs> this is all practical effects. Yeah. I That Flintstones movie, I loved as a kid. You're Talk, so we're talking about the John Goodman one, right? Which, by the way, John Goodman did not want to be there. Oh, I could, I could see that. You know, he meant, it's because Steven Spielberg like kind of got him in like a weird deal. It's like, hey, if I do this for you, you got to be in my Flintstones movie. And he's like, yeah, sure, I'll be in your Flintstones movie. 
And then Wilma, it out, Wilma, looked, movie. Wilma looked fantastic. Uh, Betty, not so much. Betty was played. Not by to talk Rosie too Obama. much about the Flintstones movie right now, but um, which Baldwin uh, brother played Barney? No, it wasn't a Baldwin brother yet. It was oh, um, the second one. It was a Baldwin. It was uh, Rick Moranis. Oh, that's right. That's and right. Uh, Rick Moranis, I believe, went on to a talk show and said that Rosie O'Donnell should be playing Fred. <laughs> Is Goodman in the second one? No, none of them are. Who who plays uh, Fred in the second one? Okay, let's try and piece this together. I think that the leading woman from Third Rock from the Sun plays Wilma. You're right. In the second one, she does. One of the Baldwins, I'm going to say Billy, is okay. playing Barney. It is a Baldwin. Yep. And then I think the lead actor from the CBS hit show Still Standing, is that what it's called? The one where he has a hot wife and he's a schlubby old guy. Oh, he's the British guy. I know who he's you're talking British. about. He's not British, is he? Yeah, he's British in real he's life. British in real life? Yep. And that Renee, uh, Renee, whatever, the, the ginger girl is his daughter in that show. Yes. I, yeah. Yes. That That is him. Um, we just did this. What a puzzle. <laughs> we <did this. laughs> The woman who plays Betty in the second one, much more attractive than Rosie O'Donnell. <laughs> you could play Betty in the second one. <laughs> By the way, I just listen. I love myself. Rosie. By the way, she's great in her in her season of Curb. I just redeemed myself for the whole David Adewale thing. Who the fuck is David Adewale? <laughs> Who plays Betty in the second one? By the way, I don't remember what she looks like. I don't I know either. It was it was greater than Rosie O'Donnell. Halle Berry was in the first one. She was the vixen. She was like the boss's wife yeah. or something, right? Yeah, a uh, secretary, maybe assistant. Sorry. Sure. Yeah. This dope. <laughs> Looking like we're getting a Marge Bob Sims movie via The Insider. A live action Sims movie is in development with Marge Bob producing and Kate Heron directing. I imagine the way they do it is going to be very much like the movie Free Guy. I feel like it's the only way you can go about it. Curious who David Adewale is now. I don't know who this is. Why? How did I come up with that name? What's the name of the second Flintstones movie? There's a subtitle to it. Oh, is it Viva Rock Vegas? <laughs> That's what it is. That's what it is. <laughs> what I would like to do for an episode is let's take a classic movie and then try and figure out the sequels and who oh, they the characters with. It was Jane Krakowski that plays Betty. That's, That's right. Is. Yes. I yes. love Jane Krakowski. It was wow. Stephen Baldwin. The guy from Still Standing's oh, I, name is I Mark. Billy. Is I Mark Billy. Okay. It was Mark Addy. It is the guy from Still Standing. Here, uh, Kristen Johnston is yes, the, from Third the Rock woman from the Third Rock. That's right. We did it. Oh. Guys, we did it. How about News that? <laughs> <laughs> that was like Wordle, except just us being morons. Speaking of Marge Bob, Sydney Sweeney, Sid the Kid, Sween Dog, said that she would love to make a movie with Marge Bob. I love Margo. Of gold, she's absolutely incredible, and I hope I get to work with her one day. Uh, Ken Jack from the Lights Camera Pod tweeted out the perfect, absolute perfect clip. It was the Tim Robinson clip of oh, uh, uh, oh yeah, that'll do. I I think that'll do. Oh oh yeah, that'll do. Um, I don't mean to ask this question. Yeah, but is Marge Bob old enough to play Sid the Kid's mom? Marge Bob has got to be roughly our age, maybe a couple years older. She's probably 36. So Marge Bob is 23. And Sydney Sweeney, <laughs> Sydney Sweeney, I think, is probably like 25, right? So oh, no. there's probably like a 10-year age gap. But Marge Bob at 35 is going to look the same in 20 years, I'm guessing. So it mm -hmm. doesn't really matter. So you think they should make this movie in 25 years? I, I hope it's a real <laughs> stepmother, stepdaughter situation. Someone I'd gets say. caught in the dryer? <laughs> News dump. <laughs> Back, like I mentioned earlier, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire is in theaters right now. And spoiler free, my first three word review too much Ackroyd. Do you think anyone's ever seen something and said, not enough Ackroyd? Can't. No way. <laughs> not possible. Not possible. <laughs> Um, and that's a real issue, not only with this one, but even the last one, bringing those Ghostbusters back for the end. And you assumed at the end of that last one, the afterlife, that by bringing those Ghostbusters to the end of that movie, that would be the final chapter of using those characters and you can move on. But what they do is they keep on bringing back uh, 
Aykroyd and Murray, and they just can't let them go. And by doing this, you have too many characters, and this story gets way too jumbled. And they don't give you a chance to like the charm or even the charisma or um, the camaraderie of the new Ghostbusters here because you don't get enough time with them. Also, Finn Wolfhard, I think we can quit on Finn Wolfhard. I don't think they did a good enough job in the first movie to really warrant like the fake excitement for the second one or mm -hmm. the fake. Uh, they're, they're putting a lot of money behind this movie, although oddly, I forgot it was coming out this week. Um, I didn't really care for the first one. Obviously, but Paul how Steven do you Rudd have a movie great. where Paul Rudd only has one funny sequence? Yeah. How do you figure this out? I think that Camille Nanjiani is actually his character is pretty funny in this movie. And I do like the look of the baddie at the end. It looks practical while I believe it is some kind of a CGI. But the movie in general, there's just too much going on. And none say... of it is particularly good or fun. I want when I go to a movie like this, I want to have fun. When you say batty, I think of like a thick Latina. So you can't really say that. Don't you talk about my wife that way? <laughs> uh, so you, I'm gathering from your review of this movie is you're telling people not to pay to see this movie. Oh, definitely don't pay. I would have it like quality wise. I think it's above Madam Web, but I would watch Madam Web 100 times over this. <laughs> um, so this is my second to worst movie on the year so far. And any, I've seen six movies. Any mid credit, post credit, anything like that? I can't even remember. <laughs> there might be, but it might just be one of those gag ones. Also, okay. they have a British guy in here in the entire movie. I was saying David Adewale should be playing this guy. <laughs> and the guy next to you is like, who the fuck is David Adewale? I kept nudging the guy. I'm like, hey, David Adewale should. But in all honesty, the guy, like, he's a British guy. Yeah. And he's supposed to have, like, this British humor. And I'm like, oh. If Richard Adale, I believe is his real name. No, nope, still got it wrong. I can't do it. But if that guy was in this movie, I think it would have been better. Um, by the way, he like disappeared. He hasn't been in anything in a while, at least not yeah. that we've seen. So I don't know. I what think he's still famous in England, though. Like he's still he's still big over there. He's to be famous in England. I, he's I mean, fucking... the pond. Like, you know how, and I'm not There's like 200,000 people in England. Like, I'm not comparing these two people because, you know, one of them is allegedly a real bad guy. Yeah. But like, Russell Brand was huge in England for a very long time. He popped mm. up over here for a while, but never really caught on. How, if you had to venture a guess, let's do a little qu quick game of closest to the pin. What is the name of the third Flintstones movie? <laughs> How many people would you say is in, are in the United Kingdom? What is their citizenship? Give me, <sighs> give me a guess. I'll, I'm going to say 15 million. Ones. Sure. What do you What do you got? I'll say 15 million. No, you 15 have to guess something one. different. 15 million and one. <laughs> all right united kingdom population holy shit all right well it's a debt it's a dense population yeah 67 million <laughs> oh shit i was right <laughs> yeah you won you won that one Woo, the showcase showdown i get one prize i don't get all of it <laughs> news down also roadhouse is available on prime Speaking of a uh, UK citizen, Conor McGregor is the villain in this movie. Jake Gyllenhaal stars in this movie. Um, it's not getting absolutely killed, initial reviews. So that's interesting. I thought it was going to be lauded over and, and really fucking murdered online. But right now, 68% from the critics on Rotten Tomatoes, a 58 on Metacritic. So people are saying, it's I. It's I. So. News <laughs> That'll do it for this news dump. Check us out at the beginning of next week for Aquaman 2. Is that what we're doing? Yes. Oh, boy. Yes, 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 yes. I'm looking, so excited about looking this. Looking forward to that one. Yeah. Wow. Where am I going to start? Probably at the beginning, I think. I got no words for that movie. I might, I like, I legitimately, at, at, at the first like 25 minutes, I'm like, all right, they're leaning into it. And then once we hit the middle part of the movie, I'm like, this movie is fucking terrible. I'm the exact opposite. I was bored as shit during the first 25 to 30 minutes. And once I was told that uh, Manta wants to kill himself a dead mermaid, I'm in. You're a big Orm guy, though. I'm a big Orm guy. He's a crafty lefty. <laughs> See you guys next time. Hit it up.